everyone, welcome back. We're uh, in the garden this morning, it just started to rain and I just wanted to show you something. We've got lots of these beauties. They're coming up everywhere. This one's got a bit old now. And these little beauties. So here they are sliced up. Um, they were common puffball mushrooms. Now they're called breakfast. Just a bit of melted butter. You fry the mushrooms in that. Once you've browned them off, I add four eggs. A bit of black pepper. And there we have it, my breakfast. And there we go, simple breakfast for a simple man. I think you saw the damage that the rain had done to the roof of the greenhouse, so we're, we've decided to uh, strip it out, take it all apart, uh, move it and build a blockwork greenhouse with a Prospex roof and windows, obviously. white canvas type um, material that we're taking off the greenhouse. I will make some frames up and uh, cut it to appropriate sizes and uh, reuse it, make some cold frames and some uh, cloches. So we were going to build with the greenhouse, make a tractor shed as well, and on the back of the tractor shed we were going to have a the new chicken house. But um, as you'll see later in the video, we're moving the chicken house uh, to somewhere more shaded, which is better for them. So here I've marked it out with these uh, pins. So it's about seven meters long, um, four meters wide. That'll be the size of the tractor shed and the greenhouse. The greenhouse will only be two meters wide. 
um, because we can grow most of our stuff, tomatoes, etc. Um, can all grow outside, but we want to grow things like ginger and turmeric and maybe try growing some peppers. So this is now where we've decided to put the new chicken shed for the 13, 14 or 15, however many it was, chickens. Uh, so it's going to be 3 metres, about 10 foot by 2 metres, about 6 foot. Um, I've marked it out with four corner posts. We chose here because it's in the shade of the, uh, the four navel orange trees we have. And um, shade's really important for the chickens, especially through the summer, which we've just nearly finished now but um yeah these guys provide really good shade for the chickens and they can dig around and scratch around under here now we're just checking the dimensions of the chicken house and then measuring the diagonals to make sure it's square and then i'm using these two boards um as a sort of marker for the, uh, the small shovel I'm using to cut into the turf. The turf's notoriously tough to cut through with a big shovel. So this should leave me a trench about a foot wide, 300 mil. Um, as you can see, I'm moving it around as I'm going. I'm going I'm to cut all the turf first before I start digging it up. Now I'm starting to dig out all the turfs that I've cut with the smaller shovel and um, taking these away in the barrow to the next terrace down where in the future, another project, I'm going to build some raised beds. Um, we're going to put these in the bottom of the raised beds just to bulk up, um, you know, because you need a lot of soil in a raised bed. Just as a point of interest, I'm now using an American style uh, shovel or spade, um, which is really good for actual digging. I was using a corner shovel for bottoming out, a square nose shovel for cleaning up, and uh, obviously the long trenching shovel for because it's got a very fine point on it for actually cutting the turf in the first place. So as you can see, that's the turf taken off the tops. Um, now all it needs to do is, I've started in this corner, it needs to be squared off. Uh, it's about six inches deep there. Uh, more importantly, from this to the lowest part of the dig, we have to level, dig the foundation so they're level from here all the way around. So they'll be a lot deeper here. Yeah, the reason for this is it's so much easier to to build from the level foundations than stuff that's all over the place with steps and etc. So tomorrow we'll continue squaring this out like this and leveling it through. So as I said we started at the shallow end where you think is the lowest point and dig the trench level from there on. So 
And when you put the concrete into a, a level, um, you're starting everything from a nice level. <coughs> Because it's about 30 degrees here, I'm hot, so I'm going for a swim and I'm going to have a beer. Um, this week we're going to do some concreting of the new chicken shed, and uh, I've got I've roped someone in to give us a hand. It's a friend from corner. Frankie on the road, Ewan. Carissa's here somewhere. Hello, hello. And uh, we'll make we'll crack on. We're going to do a mix, a standard concrete mix, three aggregate, two sand, one cement. Let's crack on. When you're mixing concrete or render, it's always best to measure it with a bucket or, you know, uh, it's a bit like cooking with, with food, with, with cups. Always measure the, your, your mixed quantities um, and keep it the same every time. So, like if you're making render uh, or if you're making a mix to do some pointing with, every, if you use the same measurements every time, it always comes out the same colour and the same strength and it's consistent. Um, I use bucket for water as well because uh, if you use a hose pipe you can always make the mistake of letting it run too long and uh, then your mix is too wet and virtually unusable. Just to reiterate, uh, this mix is three bucketfuls of aggregate, two bucketfuls of sand and one bucketful of cement, which makes it five to one, which is a good enough mix for foundations for a, a small chicken shed. If you need it stronger, you can put more cement in or reduce the amount you know, of uh, aggregate and sand. Ewan is loading the front of the cradle on the tractor with uh, concrete blocks as a counterbalance for the um, three loads of concrete that we're going to put in the in the um, box on the back. So we, um, without this, then uh, the tractor front end would probably be, be in the air most of the time.
this is the first of uh, the th three mixes we're putting in. The total of six mixes altogether, which has been um, six wheelbarrow fulls. Uh, to give you some idea of the volumes of material we've used, that's 36 buckets of material in total with the gravel, the sand and the cement. I haven't included water. Here we are back with the second load. You're in shoveling in the trench and I'm uh, leveling it off. It's really important, I cannot stress how important it is to make sure that you pay particular attention to how level it is as you're going around, yeah? Because when you start laying the blocks on top of that, the it just makes it so much easier if your foundations are level. I keep saying that, don't I? Just a quick demonstration I'm getting the consistency of the concrete right. When you're leveling out, just an easy demo on how, how it should be best to do it. So basically, when you put the concrete, you lay your concrete on there, smooth it out to what you think is roughly level. And if you work it up and down with the trowel, the whole lot moving like a big jelly yeah it should if it's the right consistency level itself out and then you just check it with a spirit level and that's a little bit too high in the corner just keep Tamping it down, which gets the air bubbles out of it as well, and makes it a stronger mix. Drop that again. Okay, so that's uh, that's the base for the new chicken house done. Um, I'll just show you where we finished off with the tamping. So when you've worked around with the trench, leveling it off as you go, when you meet where you started, you should be level or levelish. This is a shot of me walking down one of the many. Calzada streets or granite cobbled streets in Alpadrina. Um, every year, this time of year, September, they have a, a festival called Chocalios, which is a, a festival um, celebrating the shepherds in the area. And uh, what happens is they, they come from the nearest market town of Fundao with, uh, with all their sheep and they walk over the Gardunia Mountains following the Roman road and this tradition goes back for a long, long time. Uh, they follow the road uh, over to Alcangosta, then the top of the Gardunia Mountains and then they come down through the village of Alpadrina. The procession of Chacalios, um symbolises the shepherds bringing their sheep down from the some are grazing up in the mountains down to near their homes uh, and, and winter grazing so the sheep are more safe and the shepherds can easily keep an eye on them instead of roaming around the mountain tops.
of Sucalios uh, has been very much subdued due to COVID-19. So usually there would be a lot more sheep here, a lot more people. Celebrations usually start on a Thursday night and finish on a Tuesday morning. Uh, it's a whole weekend type of festival thing. They have live rock bands and uh, pig roast, spit roast and all sorts of things going on. So yeah, it's a, it's a great time of year to be living in Albertina. And we just spotted a couple of our friends, Ian and Fiona, in the crowd. Hello! So that's all this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, like and subscribe. <laughs> Bye! Bye.